If there's one thing that doesn't change in today's world, it's that everything changes. What's new and improved today is obsolete tomorrow. As soon as you buy an electronic device, like a computer, it begins to decrease in value. We say that the computer depreciates in value, and the depreciation of items often happens at a constant rate. The value of the computer decreases the longer you own it. Let's say you buy a brand new computer for $900. It's state-of-the-art when you buy it, but it depreciates in value at a rate of $150 each year. That means after one year, the value decreases by $150. After two years, $300. Or after X years, the computer's value decreases by $150X. So the value of the computer, which we'll call Y, can be calculated by taking the original price of $900 and subtracting 150x, which is how much the value depreciates depending on the number of years. That equation is y equals 900 minus 150x. But now let's change the order of the terms on the right-hand side. This doesn't change the calculation, but it does put the equation in a particular form. It's called the slope-intercept form of an equation. In this form, you can identify important elements of the equation. In general, the slope-intercept form is expressed as y equals mx plus b. The m represents the slope. Y and m? That is one of the great mysteries of mathematics. But that's the letter universally used as slope. Equally as mysterious, the B stands for the y-intercept. So, by looking at the equation, you can determine the slope and the y-intercept of the line which is the graph of the equation. Let's take a simple example. Let's consider the equation y equals 2 thirds x minus 4. The minus 4 is the y-intercept, the point where the line crosses the y-axis, and the starting point for our graph. The slope is two-thirds, which gives us a rise and a run to get us to our next point. You can continue and plot a couple more points. Then connect the points to complete the graph of the line. Using the slope-intercept form is an easy way to graph an equation. It allows you to draw the graph without calculating the coordinates of the point. If we return to our aging computer, we can use the information we get from the slope-intercept form of the equation to help us graph the depreciation. The slope in this equation is negative 150, and the y-intercept is 900. That gives us all the information we need to graph the equation. The y-intercept is the point at which the line crosses the y-axis, in this case, 900. The slope is negative 150. If you think of that as a fraction, negative 150 over 1, the rise is negative 150 for each run of 1. You can count 1 to the right and 150 down and plot a couple points on this graph. Then connect the points to draw the line. As valuable as this information is when graphing, it is equally as valuable to understand what these quantities mean in interpreting the problem. The y-intercept is truly a starting point, not just for the graph, but for the real-world situation. In this case, the y-intercept, 900, is the value of the computer when it's new, or in terms of time, at x equals zero, when no time has elapsed. The slope is the rate of change, how the value of the computer is changing over time. The slope in this case is negative, indicating the value is decreasing over time. And the number tells us how much it is decreasing. In this case, how much the value decreases each year. $150 each year that elapses after the computer is purchased. It is important that you understand the relationship between the information in the real world situation, the values in the equation, and the representation on the graph. This will help you understand other aspects of the situation. For example, on this graph, 
we could determine at what point the computer would no longer have any value. That would be the point where the line crosses the x-axis, because at that point, the cost along the y-axis is zero. That point, by the way, is called the x-intercept. Algebraically, you could determine that point by setting y equals zero and solving for x. In this case, x equals six. So, in six years, this computer will be worthless. The slope-intercept form is a powerful tool to use in graphing linear equations, but also to use in understanding the mathematics that drive real-world situations. Our computer's appreciation example could have been about what happens to the value of a new car. Or there are other applications, from a cell phone plan where you pay a flat rate and then are charged for additional text messages, to buying a pizza and adding on your favorite toppings. In any of these, by recognizing that the slope represents the rate of change and that the y-intercept is a significant point in the situation, usually a starting point, you can give solving real-world problems a whole new slant.